This video is intended to show the details of installation of SPDs from an application standpoint. It is not intended to fully cover safety procedures for all applications, including local or company requirements, and therefore you should defer to those procedures for safety considerations for installing electrical equipment. Application Considerations for the Installation of Panel-Mounted Surge Protection Devices A surge protection device, or SPD, is installed on an electrical system to prevent damage from high-voltage transients or high-speed events like lightning that can damage electrical equipment. If you have been tasked with installing an SPD in a three-phase or split-phase panel board, there are several things to consider before, during, and after your installation that go beyond the basic installation procedure so that you can maximize the benefit of the SPD. These considerations include pre-work including safety procedures, locating the panel and finding a circuit breaker to feed the SPD, installation which includes physically installing the unit, and final checks to ensure that the SPD is working as expected. So let's start with the pre-work. First, you should look at the site location where the SPD is to be installed. During this step, you should check and verify the voltage level and number of phases in the panel and grounding type for the services feeding this panel. For example, the voltage may be 208-123 phase Y, 483 phase delta, 482-77 3 phase Y, 24120 split phase, or a 208 volt single phase. Usually, this information should be available on the nameplate of the panel board your SPD must match the voltage level and type for three reasons. If you don't match the number of phases with the SPD protection, you won't appropriately protect the panel and the loads fed from it. For example, using a residential split phase unit on a commercial three phase power system wouldn't protect all three phases. Next, if you select an SPD that has too high of a voltage clamping level, it won't protect the system as well. For example, if you use a 480 volt unit on a 208 volt system. And finally, if you select a voltage level that is too low, it will try to operate or clamp the voltage all of the time and will quickly damage the SPD, melting the MOV components inside. Next, verify that the source transformer or system feeding this panel is solidly grounded. A solidly grounded system can use a Y-connected or rated SPD that clamps at a lower voltage and will protect the system appropriately compared to a delta connected or line to line connected SPD that will protect the system at a higher level, allowing smaller surges to get through the system. The nameplate of the upstream transformer should indicate the voltage level. The secondary of the transformer for commercial power systems will indicate a solidly grounded Y connection. Normally, these transformers or the next panel downstream that they feed bonds the neutral, making it a solidly grounded system and a Y rated SPD can be used. where high resistance grounding or delta systems are in place, the SPD should be delta rated. If the system is not solidly grounded, then it must be considered ungrounded and a delta rated SPD must be used. So at this point, you should know the following, voltage level, number of phases, and grounding type. Now you are ready to move to the next step for installation. To prepare for installation, you first have to unbox the SPD you selected in the pre-work and make sure you understand the physical size and where you could install it on the selected panel. The physical installation of this unit is very important to the benefit it yields. You may also need to determine if any special mounting requirements are needed for the SPD if the panel board is flush mounted versus surface mounted. Next, you will need to find an appropriate circuit breaker to feed the SPD. The specification for this breaker can be found in the paperwork that comes with the SPD, but generally it will be a 30 amp or 50 amp breaker, and it will either be a 2 pole or 3 pole breaker depending on the system voltage and type. For split phase systems, a 2 pole breaker is used, and for 3 phase systems, a 3 pole breaker is required. The next step before you do the physical installation is to determine where in the panel the breaker can be installed and where the SPD will be mounted. Many people assume that the breaker must be installed at the top of the panel or right next to the incoming line to absorb surges coming from the source. 
In reality, the SPD needs to be as close as possible to the bus through a breaker with wire length as short as possible. Therefore, the external or physical location of the SPD usually dictates where the breaker should go and sometimes this means moving other loads inside the panel, if necessary, to minimize the SPD wire length. A surge protector will clamp at the rated voltage, say for example 400 volts on a 208 volt system, which will protect the loads in the panel. This overvoltage is very fast and most loads can take up to about 5 times normal voltage at the speed of these transients. SPDs are tested and rated with 6 inches of cable. The cable should not be extended and in fact should be shortened if possible. For every inch of cable that you allow on that SPD beyond 6 inches, you add about 25 volts of let through to the rated voltage. Therefore, if the length of the SPD connection to the breaker was 26 inches or 20 inches longer, the SPD would clamp at about 25 times 20 plus 400 volts or 900 volts, giving less protection to the loads fed from the panel. Because of variations in installations, the SPDs are shipped with conductors that are left longer than you would typically need, so you can likely cut some length from the supplied conductors to optimize the SPD benefits. In general, short lead lengths are the most important consideration. Mounting anywhere, top, middle, or bottom of the bus bar has minimal effect on the protection level. The other thing that is important to recognize is that other loads can create transients within the facility, and those surges come back from the other loads into the bus bar in the panel, so an SPD with a shorter lead length is better for these load-related surges. Now that you know where to install the breaker and where the SPD will be installed, turn off the power to the panel and install the breaker in the appropriate location. Put a knockout aligned with that breaker as close as you can to the breaker so you can feed the other two or three phases into the breaker and the neutral and ground conductors to the neutral and ground bus bars. Remember, since the surge has to travel from the phase conductors or the neutral to the ground bus to take that surge away from the panel to protect the loads, the length of the neutral and ground leads are equally as important from the SPD. If you have to decide between having a longer neutral or longer ground lead, make the ground lead conductor shorter. We have seen installations as far as 30 feet away from the panel or switchboard that the SPD is trying to protect, and actually, even though the lights will come on and it looks like it should protect, it is doing little to nothing and will not protect the load enough to prevent damage to equipment. Before connecting the SPD to the breaker, twist or braid the conductors once for every 4 inches of conductor where possible to minimize this electrical impedance.
Also, ensure that the wires are as straight as possible with no sharp ends or coils as this adds to the impedance and the let through voltage yielding less protection for the loads. In our surge protection video, we demonstrate that for externally mounted SPDs, the let through is significantly affected by all of these considerations. Before turning the power back on, ensure that the wiring is correct and that all of the connections to the breaker and bus bar are tight. Reinstall the dead front and covers and energize the device per appropriate safety standards. Once the SPD is energized, you should see green indicating lights telling you that the SPD is operating properly. If the LEDs are red, the unit has been damaged and should be replaced. While all of these steps may seem relatively simple and wouldn't seem to have a big effect on the benefits of the SPD, it does make a huge difference in the results. You may never see the benefits as you will likely not connect an oscilloscope to your panel and measure the voltage let through, but the work that we have done to identify these issues is significant and well documented and that is why we are sharing this information with you. You may wonder why multiple surge protectors are installed on a single power system, like your home or a commercial application. And the answer is, since transient voltages travel very quickly, they don't travel very far before they can do damage, so multiple SPDs may be required. For example, you may install one on your main panel and one at a sub-panel or on an outlet protecting a critical load. Additionally, transients don't travel well through transformers, so typically, in commercial or industrial applications, an SPD is installed on a 480 volt system and on the other side of a transformer on a 208 volt system to protect the local loads. If you are tasked with installing multiple SPDs in one location, do all of the pre-work first for all of the installations to save yourself time and rework after the fact. Remember to follow your local safety guidelines when installing any electrical equipment. If you have any additional questions about the installation of SPDs or other power quality related equipment, please contact the Eaton Technical Resource Center at 800-809-2772, option 4, sub option 2 for more help.